from major U.S. routes whose shoulders are supposedly stalked by the vengeful ghosts of long-dead witches, to forested drives plagued by restless spirits resulting from brutal murders. Are you ready for the most haunted roads in West Virginia? Number 5. The West Virginia Turnpike Officially Interstate 77, the West Virginia Turnpike is a toll road and major north-south highway stretching 187 miles between Bluefield at the Virginia state line and Williamstown at the Ohio state line. Historically, construction of the turnpike was started in 1952, lasted for two years, and cost the lives of five workers. The pike was opened as a two-lane route, recognized for its treacherous curbs and memorial tunnel, and by the 1960s, in the heat of its popularity and utilization, it earned an ominous reputation for being an utter death trap. By just 1975, the new route had claimed a total of 278 lives, with 28 noted fatalities in 1979 alone. In 1976, work was started to widen the turnpike to four lanes, and in 1987, the strip was elevated to interstate status, with the new line bypassing and eliminating the memorial tunnel entirely. Today, the turnpike boasts three toll barriers, is the fastest route through the state and, while efforts have improved its quality, remains one of the most dangerous drives in West Virginia. Though stories of supernatural activity have prevailed across the turnpike's length, the bulk of hauntings are said to be experienced over the 17 miles or so between Beckley and Mossy. During construction of this portion, it's said that several old, possibly even ancient cemeteries were relocated or even covered up. and. Many braving it have reported strange light spied zipping in trees over shoulders, extreme temperature fluctuations, and even UFO sightings. Both authorities and other travelers have recounted picking up hitchhikers, some adults, others children who are seemingly lost, only to have them disappear mid-drive. On one such notable occasion, more than 22 individual drivers claimed to have picked up a well-dressed man along the route, who was either silent the entire time or stared at them eerily before saying suddenly, Jesus is coming, before vanishing with a snap. Number 4. 22 Mine Road Located just to the southwest of Holden, about 7 miles from Logan, off of US Route 119 lies 22 Mine Road, a dark drive infamous for a brutal murder that transpired there long ago. Historically, managers of the US Coal and Oil Company, William H. Coolidge and Albert F. Holden, would visit the area in 1902 and would purchase local land for the purpose of expanding their operation. Coal mines were quickly established, with houses, various businesses, and a railroad following closely after, and by 1904, their company was producing. The town of Holden, named after Albert, was constructed as a model coal town, and eventually, U.S. Coal and Oil would alter its title to Island Creek Coal Company, with Albert acting as their first president. In 1969, Island Creek was sold to the Occidental Petroleum Company, who would, in turn, sell shares to a new firm, which decided to relocate headquarters, leaving most of the old township to the West Virginia Department of Highways in order to make room for Route 119. Today, the region boasts a population of around 700, with an economy that remains based in mining. The forested, mountainous expanse of 22 Mine Road is steeped in various local legends, with those braving it describing wisps of smoke that float with seeming sentience, ominous spectral black dogs, and extreme cold spots. The most popular legend revolving around 22 Mine tells that on June 22nd of 1932, the body of 32-year-old Mamie Thurmond was discovered behind a blackberry bush, her throat slit, and two bullets in her head. 
Mamie's full-bodied apparition has been encountered along the road's length, sometimes in a deranged state and with gruesome wounds, while at others, hitchhiking, only to vanish shortly after being picked up. Lastly, some tell that if you pull off to the site of 22 Mine and throw your vehicle in neutral, that Mamie will push it uphill. Chillingly, after confirming said phenomena, many have noted handprints on the exterior of their windows. Number 3. West Run Road West Run Road is a densely forested rural route cutting to the north and along the outskirts of the city of Morgantown, a region that historically was highly contested and that harbored a number of skirmishes between native tribes, settlers, British, French, and other nations. In 1767, one Colonel Zachwell Morgan, along with his brother David, would arrive to the area while seeking the perfect place to settle. And by 1772, he would establish a homestead near present-day Fayette Street and University Avenue. In 1783, the colonel would receive papers for 400 acres locally, with just 50 appropriated for Morgan's Town just two years later in 1785. And on February 3rd of 1838, under the Virginia Grand Assembly, the city was finally officially incorporated as Morgantown, Virginia. In 1863, amidst the Civil War, Morgantown would be absorbed into the newly formed state of West Virginia, after which it would evolve into the city we know today. Over time, a number of ghost stories and urban legends surrounding land holding West Run have been passed through generations, with some telling of battles, skirmishes, and murders, and others of witches' covens, satanic cults, portals to hell, and dark rituals. And many braving this spooky stretch have encountered shadowy figures darting through the trees, strange patches of fog that float with seeming sentience, and slender humanoid creatures on all for spied roaming nearby fields. Before their destruction, three crosses used to loom over the lane from a prominent hillside, and many claimed they marked a former coven's Sabbath meeting place, and that dark forces made them glow at night. Lastly, activity along this route is said to get strongest between midnight and 4 a.m., especially near the former Potter's Field, now Magnolia County Cemetery, which is said to hold the remains of several witches. Their spirits have been sighted along West Run, pitch black, smoky entities with eerie pale faces. Number 2. U.S. Route 50 U.S. Route 50, cutting from West Virginia's eastern to western borders and connecting Ohio to Virginia, is a lengthy stretch that's become infamous for its many purported paranormal infestations, the bulk of which are said to lie right near the town of Salem. Historically, Salem was settled by a group of Seventh-day Baptist families through the summer of 1790 as New Salem. In 1794, it was officially chartered as the first Seventh-day Baptist settlement west of the Allegheny Mountains, and in 1863, West Virginia separated from Virginia, after which, in 1884, the town was renamed as simply Salem. Salem College would be founded in 1888. On the 25th of February in 1905, it was finally incorporated, and by 1925, U.S. Route 50 had been laid along the community's border. Over the years, the section of U.S. Route 50 bordering Salem has been surrounded in a wealth of scary stories and local fables, with those traveling its expanse reporting ghostly mining lanterns off to the sides of the road. Strange growling heard from trees and bushes, and extreme temperature fluctuations. Brandy Gap Tunnel Number 2, just off of the route and east of town, is said to be haunted by the spirits of railroad workers long deceased, as well as something much larger and more hostile, and several motorists have recounted pulling over for hitchhikers that they described as seeming off, like something not real, twisted, in human skin. 
Lastly, the most famous legend surrounding Route 50 tells of a ghostly woman in a red coat who wanders the shoulders on foggy nights with her hood pulled taut. All who have stopped for this hitcher have been met in utter shock and terror as upon her approach, they realize she's missing her face. While some claim this entity is simply the restless spirit of a woman who was hit by a speeding car, others tell she may actually be the wrathful soul of a witch who, long ago, cursed Salem to burn over and over again. Sadly, this small town has been subjected to several severe fires. One in 1901, which claimed the entire original north side of Main Street, and another in as recently as 2006, which, ironically, and unfortunately destroyed the very same portion, along with the old city bank building, several storefronts, and a handful of residences. Number 1. National Road National Road is a rural, forested drive that merges with U.S. Route 40 that stretches from Cumberland, Maryland to Vandalia, Illinois, and that's grown wildly in infamy for a string of purported associated hauntings and local ghost stories. Eerily enough, traditional native tales once had this area pinned as the place of the skull, leading to early legends claiming the first white man to settle near was captured, scalped, and then decapitated. Historically, the area was first officially explored by the French in 1749. In 1769, one Ebenezer Zane would claim land for he and his family, and in 1774, Fort Henry was established near in an effort to better protect settlers of the area in an era of increasing cultural tension. In 1793, the settlement had grown into a town, and over time, mines, businesses, and additional residences would follow, until the Great Depression, after which the local economy slowed immensely. Into the present, Valley Grove has retained its small-town feel, boasting a meager population of just 400 residents, and over the years, a number of local legends surrounding hauntings along National Road have surfaced, with motorists, bikers, and walkers reporting disembodied gunshots, voices, cannon fire, and even Mothman sightings. Rooney's Point is said to be a more active site along the route, with fables claiming it was once an insane asylum or a tuberculosis center where torturous experiments were held, and those who have braved it have reported encountering the full-bodied apparitions of doctors, nurses, patients, and orderlies wondering about, with several informal investigations yielding orbs in photographs, chilling EVPs, and exceedingly high EMF levels. Some stories tell of satanic rituals held along Old Forty, and of resulting shadowy figures, cryptid sightings, and silhouettes that are downright demonic in nature. Others of close scrapes with the dreaded Wendigo, and one tale tells of a commonly experienced phenomena in which motorists hear a tapping on the exterior of their vehicles. This story furthers to warn that if one experiences this tapping, that they should keep their windows up and doors locked until they reach their destination. Lastly, on September 1st in 1777, during a brutal assault by native parties, one Major Samuel McCulloch arrived to assist Fort Henry with a force of 40 mounted men out of Short Creek. It's recorded that McCulloch lingered behind to ensure his men made it to the safety of Henry, and that the settlers were forced to close the gates on him, leaving Sam, a borderer with a none-too-savory reputation among the tribes, alone and completely surrounded. With the masses in pursuit, the major rode to the top of a nearby hillside sporting a cliff-like precipice. Out of options, he took the bridle into the vice-like grip of his left hand, clenched his rifle in his right, and with a cry that broke the heavens, spurred his faithful mount right over the edge of the 300-foot drop. Native forces in pursuit rushed to the edge of the precipice, fully expecting to sight the Major's broken body below. But to their utter astonishment, they instead witnessed McCulloch alive and still mounted atop his white horse, riding off into the sunset. The ghostly form of Major Samuel McCulloch has been sighted to this day and has been encountered traveling the area at unnatural speeds, atop a gleaming spectral stallion that's been known to gallop right off into the skies. 
taking into consideration its fascinating, dark, and absolutely astonishing history, and coupling it with a slew of ghost stories and urban legends larger than Spruce Mountain, we felt National was the perfect choice as the most haunted road in West Virginia. Thanks for tuning in for our list of some of the most haunted roads in West Virginia. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on. Throw us a like, and most importantly, share us with anyone you feel deserves a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.